Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Cited. This is Jesse, a.k.a. BGFH, and I am back for another kind of a channel update and topics and such video. Man, uh, I believe I did one of these right around the beginning of the month uh, because of a bunch of events and things that were going on and happening, but man, there's just been so many things. It's been a heck of an interesting year so far. A um, couple of annoying things uh, just to get out of the way first before we get into some awesome news. Um, so just to, you know, man, I, I will have to say the weather around the Great White North up here, it's kind of getting old. Uh, <laughs> we've, like I said, over the past, oh, two weeks, two and a half weeks or so, it's been super, super cold. Then it got really, then it got warm again. Then it got cold again and really icy. Then we just got completely dumped on uh, for snow. Then we got uh, more snow and more cold and more snow. And then it kind of tapered off the last day or so. And then it was kind of blustery and snowing a little bit this afternoon. It's like, good Lord, please make it stop. It's just like <laughs> the intersection by where I live is just this waist high snowy nightmare you can't even get to the pole uh to hit the walk button and i mean it's just you look around everywhere and there's just snow everywhere so there's a lot of work to be done to get things cleared up so that's just a fun little local uh thing that i'm uh ranting about a little bit because you know yeah like i said i i wish more cities would uh put it in their taxes you know put it put it in their funding for um, <clears throat> sidewalk removal, at, at least, you know, going down the main sidewalks along the road. I mean, of course, everybody should be uh, responsible for uh, shoveling their sidewalks to go up to their front door. Of course, that should be the case. But, you know, just to have somebody be able to just take a, you know, snowplow or a little skid steer or something and just whoosh, just go right down so that pedestrians and and people in scooters or wheelchairs or anything like that can get around because, man, like I said, it's... Drivers are so heavily, you know, favored. I mean, yeah, I know roads suck too. I totally get that. But, you know, at least plows regularly, you know, go out to try to clean those. Um... But sidewalks have just, you know, they're always kind of a pain. And a lot of it's left up to, you know, the individuals and not everyone does it. And then you have stuff that's really hard to get around. And like I said, I, I just, I can't even imagine being in a wheelchair. Uh, because pretty much around here, you're not going anywhere these days unless you're really, really lucky. So hopefully that does change. But um, that rant aside... One other kind of a bummer thing, well, real bummer thing that I <clears throat> have to at least mention. I know if you follow the gaming industry at all in the last few days, you probably heard about a, you know, oh, I don't know, maybe you've never heard of them before. They're just this little upstart small company that came out of nowhere. A little company called Activision or Activision Blizzard. <clears throat> okay, extreme sarcasm ending. Uh, yeah, Activision Blizzard, they, there were some rumors late last week, and then it actually happened, I guess, early to mid this week, where they made some, un I'm not going to go through the exact details, but just give you guys an overview, and just, I had to mention it, um, so they have this record-breaking revenue year in 2018, so they're doing great. You know, they got Call of Duty, that does pretty well every year. Of course, the Blizzard games, you got Overwatch and World of Warcraft and whatever else. Um, but yeah, so they, you know, they made a lot of money. Um, so all is well, right? Mm, not so much. Well, actually, yeah, Activision and Blizzard, they basically laid off 8% of their entire workforce uh, just whoop, Oh, okay, okay, bye, guys. And that's so weird. Like, you know, you understand that sort of if a company is trying to stay afloat and they have to, you know, they basically have to re, 
align things to try to survive, then okay, you know, you get that. You have to tighten some strings a little bit. I get that. But when you're doing well um, and you ax 8% of your workforce, and the, believe me, these are ginormous companies. I can't remember what it was. I think it was like somewhere between eight and 900 people. Just, yep, 800, 900 people, boo, gone, gone. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I've and you've heard of this type of thing before, you know, just these mass layoffs from some of these companies. You know, they're almost treated like contract workers. Oh, okay, you're finished this game, or, eh, this game didn't do quite as well. Nah, you're gone. Or what they'll do is they'll overestimate. They'll say, well, to make it look better, see, we'll just make this astronomically high... Uh, prediction like we want X game to sell you know 80 million copies well you only sold 65 million so even though that's amazing we set this bar that was never attainable but it makes it sound like it came up short therefore we can blame you guys and ax you guys that actually worked on the game and us cushy managers and shareholders can still keep our 30 million dollar salaries and you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's just a really shitty thing that happened. Um, you know, I, and the reason I bring it up, you know, like I said, I, I, I wanted to be in the game industry to some degree. Like, I've always wanted to work, you know, if, at one time I thought I wanted to be a programmer. Well, as I said before, I've taken programming classes, and the only thing I really learned was that I suck at programming. So that was out, you know. Um, I wanted to write about them. Um, but that was not really such a easy thing to get into. Uh, and now with YouTube and all this stuff, I kind of found my little niche of like, well, even though I'm not really getting paid for it just yet, um, I feel I can at least try to make a meaningful contribution to the game field, be it in accessibility and things like that. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, wanting to be in that field, I mean, just seeing all of these things happen where like, you know, the job security is just crazy. Um, and even for the people that don't get let go, you know, okay, you got, you let go, you let go of 800 people and the people that are left are thinking, well, God, we lost a lot of talent, you know, over here. And, you know, it's like, well, what's going to happen to us? I mean, the morale's just got to be down for even the people that are left because it's like, oh, well, if they can just ax this many people, you know, at once, who's to say I'm not next in six months or whenever the next uh, quarterly earnings meeting is. So, you know, we got to make it look like we're growing all the time, you know, because the fewer people you have on staff, again, you know, the more money it looks like they make because they don't have to split it amongst so many people. Uh, but yeah, so I, I just, I really hope these developers can land on their feet and, you know, keep going in the industry and hope, you know, hope they, if they're talented people, you know, you don't want them to get discouraged and be like, well, you know, the, these big companies are so hostile to the talent that we're just going to say, screw it and not do games anymore. And that's kind of what might happen, you know? So I just wanted to, um, mention that, like I said, Thoughts definitely go out to all the people that lost their jobs because that's just ridiculous. Um, but yeah, so a couple of downer things that, uh, you know, I just, I felt like I wanted to mention this time. But now we get into the good stuff. So channel update real quick. As I said, I think I did a video beginning of the month, late January, early February. And since then, we're already up to... 1424 subscribers so we gained almost another you know we're, we're a quarter way to another hundred which is just ludicrous to me it's crazy um and that's great you know thank you again to everybody who is uh jumping on board and sticking with the channel and like i said i'm trying to keep things interesting trying to keep things uh trying to do a variety a bit a variety of content we have our pc uh, we have our mainstream games, our low vision spotlights, our PC accessible games, our iOS accessible games, some hardware stuff, some VR accessibility, some VR games and experiences, a little bit of Let's Plays every once in a while. Um, you know, who knows? I've done an interview. Uh, like I said, everything is divided by playlist here. I'm looking at my channel page right now, but I mean, there's just a plethora of content. We got some videos. 
Uh, you got the playlist tab up here. Everything is divided into playlists, so you can find kind of something what you're looking for. Or if you're new to the channel and you want to catch up on some of the backlog, like, oh, what are you doing? You know, events and updates or, um, you know, some of the Minecraft stuff, the co-op tours, the my Crater City tour, which I'm still actually pretty proud of. Um, you know, all that kind of stuff. So there's, there's a lot here, a lot more coming, and there's going to be a lot more accessible stuff coming. That's why I really felt that I wanted to do this sort of a update video, because uh, the last couple of days have been really exciting. Um, before I get into the accessibility thing, um, Nintendo did one of their Nintendo Directs yesterday, and I just had to comment on that because, yeah, the past few were kind of, meh, they were okay, but nothing really too special. 2018 was kind of a down year after the amazing year that the Switch had with, like, you know, a new Zelda. We had Mario Odyssey, which I fell in love with. 2018, I really didn't do much with my Switch, actually, but 2019, boy... Yeah, there's going to be some stuff. Uh, you know, Nintendo up to this point, they've had this online service that you can subscribe to so you can play Switch games online. You get some a few classic NES games. But I really haven't had even the urge to pay the 20 bucks a year or whatever it is to subscribe. But boy, that 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 is kind of starting to change because there's a title that actually they just said, oh, by the way, here's a game we're making, and uh, yeah, you can go grab it now. You know, every, the, the trend of Battle Royale, um, you got PUBG and, and Fortnite and the Call of Duty and, or Battlefield or whatever it is, and then you got this new free-to-play one. No, no, first-person shooter, nothing. The true, the one Battle Royale, the one that matters, Tetris 99. Yes, they found a way to turn Tetris into a 99 Ver player versus battle royale and that just sounds crazy and badass and really fun and i might have to actually just uh, subscribe to get that because once you're subscribed to the service it is a free download and i love me some tetris and nintendo's generally really good at making decent versions of tetris games you know, from the originals on the game boy and the nes um the tetris ds was fantastic and I've seen a little bit, of, you know, of course, the footage <clears throat> of Tetris 99. That just sounds insane. And something that I think I need to be a part of, Tetris 99. I'm definitely going to have to take a look at that this weekend. That just sounds amazing. But, I mean, man, we got a lot of stuff coming for the Switch. And hopefully things don't get delayed this year. I mean, we have, they started out with Mario Maker 2. I fell in love with that on the... Wii U, but now we have a true portable version. I can play and make these things on the TV, and then I can, you know, bring the Switch with me. And again, Mario Maker is one of those things where, like I said, I used to draw on little, on paper, I used to draw out Mario levels because I was a nerd, and yeah, I did that <laughs> when I was a kid. And now I can do it for real. I can't just, you know, look at them. I can actually draw them out in, in the game and play them. They've added some new features. Like, you can do sloped uh, le levels now where you can slide down and, like, kill Goombas and stuff. And all kinds of other things. So, kind of curious to see what that's going to be like. And that's already coming out in June. That's coming out in June. Uh, we have the new Yoshi game, which, you know, they had the, the Kirby's Epic Yarn, which is actually... I'm not going to lie, kind of an adorable game. That game came out on the Wii, and <laughs> Kirby's Epic Yarn, it was, you know, it probably meant for little kids or, you know, a younger, a younger crowd, but it was just a... It was an adorable game, you know? It, it was really kind of neat, and I enjoyed it. And now this one's kind of more, you know, a similar type of theme, but, you know, it's not all crafts. It's all, there's different types of things, like a food level, and there's all kinds of different themes, but this Yoshi's, what is, I forget even what the thing is called, but that's coming out here in the next couple months. We have, um, God, there are so many things, like a Mario Maker, Yoshi. We have a remake of the Zelda Game Boy game, um, Link's Awakening, and that was a game I started, and I just never really got to finishing, 
and just the art style and the animation and everything looks really, really cool. That is supposedly coming to the Switch sometime later in 2019. So we're going to get a, uh, basically it's a 3 d fied but it's technically like a 2D playing Zelda, like an over overhead Link to the Past style Zelda. Um, but it's, you know, it has a, like a little bit more of an isometric look to it, but it's got this really colorful, colorful look, and I really am looking forward to playing that. Bunch of RPGs, which I'm not really into, but again, you know, if you're into that, and especially you have something portable, uh, that is definitely something that a lot of people are going to like. New Fire Emblem game, a um, bunch of a couple Final Fantasies coming, you know, classic Final Fantasy games, all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, of course, they teased Animal Crossing coming later this year. Not, not in the direct, but we know that's supposedly coming because that was their big tease was it late last year they they teased that um the mech combat game um what the heck was it called demon x machina and there's a demo of that out right now so i could go play that this weekend see if it's something i would be into um a new, I don't even remember how to say the title, but there's a new Platinum Games game in addition to Bayonetta 3 coming out. And that looked pretty rad. You know, they always do these over-the-top action games, and most of them have been pretty good. There's been a couple that have been a little bit of a dud. But they have a pretty good track record, and this one looks pretty decent. So I'm kind of curious to see what that's going to be. Uh, I know, I know I'm missing... Things like I know Box Boy that that that's a series that a little puzzle series that I've I've meant to play on the DS but never got around to, so that's coming to the Switch. We're gonna check that out. Unfortunately, no WarioWare or people were were kind of predicting that we would see a Metroid Prime trilogy kind of a game come out for the Switch, and that isn't happening as of yet. But yeah, you know that could just be sprung on us before you know it, so it could happen still later. You never know. But a lot of interesting stuff. Like I said, between Tetris, uh, Mario Maker, and Zelda, (laughs) um, yeah, those three alone, and then just some other stuff sprinkled in there to boot. Um, Really strong Nintendo Direct. Uh, I was pretty impressed. So, yeah. A lot of stuff on the Switch. I just wish that their accessibility, other than their dark theme, I just wish that they had anything like that. Because if they wanted to, they could do it really, really well. I mean, look at how that they look at how they put in the little assist features in the Mario games, like the the new Super Mario Brothers, or you know things like that. They could if they wanted to. They just are seemingly oblivious to it, and I'm just not sure why. But which brings me to my final topic for this video, game accessibility. There is some stuff happening here, you guys. Um, you know, with the CVAA and the, the captioning and everything, uh, the communication stuff needing to be accessible, you know, you have text-to-speech and speech-to-text. Um, the chat part is being, uh, being more made available. But I think as kind of a, a side effect, I think actually what is happening is like, well, okay, if the, if the games have to go this far, then maybe it's just easy enough. Well, maybe we can start, even, even if it's not every menu in the game or every control or option or dialogue in the game, we're starting to kind of see a few AAA games actually use um, t- or have text-to-speech support enabled. So, like, with Crackdown 3 that comes out tomorrow, which, by the way, I'm currently downloading on both my Xbox One and the Windows version, uh, because I downloaded, I, I subscribed to Microsoft Game Pass the other day, because I'm thinking, yeah, let's do that, give it a shot. And I can get, pl- I can play Crackdown 3, amongst a bunch of other things. And, yeah, so Crackdown 3, both on Windows and the Xbox, uh, if you go under the ease of access settings for on the Xbox One or in your Xbox app for Windows. 
There are a couple of things. There's one in particular. There's under the ease of access. Um, you can. There's a checkbox where you can say, "Let games speak to me." And if the game supports it, you're going to get some of this extra text that it's able to recognize. So we're kind of starting to see bits of menus and options things have text to speech. And I really didn't think that it was gonna happen this quickly. And then of course, there's another game coming out in March, The Division 2. I haven't played the original, thought about it again, but just haven't got around to it. I don't even remember if I own it on Steam. Hell, I can't even remember anymore. But Division, The Division 2 uh, is seemingly employing a similar type of thing. Um, Ubisoft is <clears throat> supporting text-to-speech for their menus. Now, I don't... Here's the thing, is I don't think it's going to work for, you know, both of these games, Crackdown 3 and The Division 2, are these kind of open-world type games. You know, one is more focused on multiplayer, and then one is more of a campaign and co-op uh, single player or multiplayer co-op campaign and then you have the separate multiplayer mode which I don't know how interested I am with it but the the the, the core campaign of Crackdown 3 I am interested in um, but because these are open world games I don't believe some of the stuff is you know we're not again we're we're in it's in a process it's in process right now you know so I don't think we're necessarily going to be able to you know, essentially flick or be able to, you know, toggle between area of areas of interest or points of interest on a in-game map. It's like, okay, I want to, you know, I want to hit the right and left bumper or something to toggle, to cycle between, you know, different mission types. And then I want to say, okay, I want to hit A to hit a waypoint on this, uh, uh, set a waypoint to this mission. You know, I don't think we're there yet. You know, but again, give it a couple of years and you never know. That might even be a case too. So, you know, even if there are games where you still are, you know, you almost still need some vision to play effectively. Um, or maybe you use Copilot or something like that. Or you're playing co-op with somebody that can help you. You know, you can adjust the settings <clears throat> independently and at least try to start playing some of these games. So, yeah, I mean, I'm kind of curious. You know, I, The Division, I was yeah, mildly curious, but didn't really think I would think much of it, and I, I didn't know if I'd really give it much of a look. But uh, oh, when that game comes out, that might be another one that just kind of popped up on my radar. If nothing else, for the accessibility, I kind of want to take a look at, because, again, any of these companies that are going to be start including more inclusive design, uh, universal design, and, you know, okay, well, we have to make the chat accessible, so let's make some other stuff work. Hey, why not? Um, and, you know, like I said, now we have Ubisoft, we have Microsoft, we have EA. Um, I'm actually starting to lose track. <laughs> I'm actually starting to, uh, Naughty Dog, Sony with uh, the Spider-Man, uh, I'm starting to lose track of how many actual big developers and publishers are starting to at least dip their toe in the water in this accessibility business. Um, granted, yeah, we have a heck of a long way to go because you hear a lot of people even talking about there's a lot of resistance, there's a lot of actual seemingly uh, seeming anger about this whole CVAA thing and this caption thing and what do we have to do? you know people are just mad about it um yeah so it's not perfect you know of course there's a lot of work to do still but just the fact that we're making such progress so quickly is encouraging and it's fun to be a part of it you know going from somewhere where you're just you're struggling to even read the interface to get into a game to now having like oh okay menus can speak now uh, and even some games, including in-game tools that can be helpful, be it control or visual or audible, whatever they are. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that I don't even know about that are coming out in the next year that is going to surprise the heck out of me and go, ooh, that's something I'm definitely going to have to play. There's one other thing I would love to talk to you about, but I can't do it just yet. 
So again, there's lots to be covering. I'm going to hopefully try to do some Crackdown 3 stuff this weekend. Maybe do a stream, maybe do a video. I don't know, but regardless, I'm probably going to be doing some Crackdown 3 something this weekend because A, I want to play it, uh, B, uh, accessibility for sure, and C, come on man, orbs, orbs, must collect the orbs. Uh, there's just something satisfying about that, and I haven't really gotten to do it much since uh, a little bit of the original Crackdown and Saints Row 4 with the data clusters. So, yeah, looking forward to that. And there's other, definitely there's some other really cool stuff coming when I can start talking about it. I just got my business cards. I officially made up some business cards for the channel and the work that I'm doing. So I'm going to be taking those with me to the Game Accessibility Conference uh, in about a month. Good Lord, that's coming up fast. So I'm really looking forward to meeting people and the presentations and, <coughs> yeah, just seeing what becomes of that as well. So, again, I know it's going to be here before I know it. Uh, and like I said, there's just so much going on right now. And aside from those couple of things in the beginning of the video that are really kind of a bummer, I mean, as far as like accessibility and stuff goes, there's so many, so many cool things happening. It's like there's so many games that I want to play. And I don't even own all the systems for them yet. So, yeah, there's going to be a lot of stuff coming up on the channel, a lot of stuff to look forward to. And check out some of these other, you know, there's uh, there are other visually impaired uh, gamers doing stuff. And I don't, I don't necessarily, like I said, I got a couple of tips from Sightless Combat. He's well known in the accessible gaming area. I don't want to kind of mention a bunch of people, just not because I don't want to, but because I don't want to omit everybody. I don't want to omit anybody that I'm like, oh, why didn't I mention this person? Uh, but I actually got clued into this, um, the sort of the, the, set, the setting that I was talking about earlier about the have games read, read to me. I, for some reason, like, because it wasn't part of narrator, I didn't think to look there. And so I just didn't even really realize that it existed. And I saw that and went, Oh, that's cool. So, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, to end this video, I hadn't planned on it, but let's go to my Xbox app. And I will show you uh, what that setting is like. Uh, that is if my Xbox app would behave... I wonder if I'm downloading too much right now, so it's kind of cranky. Uh, okay, here we go. Stream. Okay, we're on the Xbox. Guide for BGFH window. Recent. Crackdown 3 All installing right. button. Okay, so Crackdown 3 is installing. Prime video. Press Yay. menu button for more options. Crackdown 3 installing <clears throat> button. But now... Prime video. Press menu button for more. Xbox Assist. Microsoft Store. Settings. Press horizontals. Recent. Settings. We're Press menu button for settings. more options. Settings window. Ease of access. 11 of 11. Selected. Now, all the way down on the left column, there is ease of access. I'm going to go to the right. Narrator. 1 of 7. <clears throat> so you would think, you know, having games read aloud, you would think that would be actually part of Narrator. But it isn't. And that's why I originally didn't realize that it was there. So I'll go down the first column just so you see all the different categories of accessibility. We have narrator. Magnifier. Magnifier. Closed captioning. Three Closed of seven. captioning. High contrast. Four of seven. High contrast. Controller. Five Controller. of seven. And we go High, back closed, up. Mag, narrator. Game transcription. Six of seven. Game transcription. I don't know why I didn't think to look in here. Audio, seven and seven. audio, but let's go into game transcription, game transcription six seven. and I'll show you a couple cool settings things. Window. Settings are loading. Uncheck speech to text on checkbox. Turn on speech to text to transcribe other players' voices into text on your device. So this speech is only available to text, in games that support it. It'll translate. You may need to modify additional settings in your game to use speech to text. Um, people's voices into text. So, like, if you're hard of hearing or you just need that, <clears throat> you can turn that on, which I don't, but you can. Check text to speech on checkbox. Turn on text to speech to have your chat text read aloud to other players. This text is only available in games that support it. You <coughs> this may need to modify additional settings again, in your game to use text to speech. If you have a whole bunch of, let's say you're playing a game and you have a whole bunch of chat messages coming in, 
those are going to be spoken aloud. So that's cool. You've got that. Text to speech voice. Microsoft David. Combo box. So I've got Class. Microsoft David. You can select which this voice, is a voice you want for text your text-to-speech. Your text Uncheck let games read to me checkbox. Some games can read aloud certain words that appear on screen. Let Choose whether you want games to read to you. Let games read to me. You check that sucker. Hey, why aren't you checked? Checked. I checked you earlier. You butthead. There we go. Text to speech voice. Check let games read to me checkbox. Some games can read aloud certain words that appear on screen. I don't know why. Yeah, I don't you know why that just unchecked itself. That's not cool. So if I back up access, again, 11 of 11. Selected. Narrator. Well, game transcription. Six game of seven. transcription is where you want to go. I'm going to go back to really fast. Settings are loading. Text to speak. Check let games read to me. Checkbox. Some games can read yep, aloud certain words that appear okay. on screen. Yep. So Choose now we want games to read. Still. access. 11 of 11. <clears throat> um, yeah. So game transcription. And the one you really want is let games read to me. I'm very curious to see. I don't know. Like Crackdown 3 is really the first one that I've heard of that does that. I don't know if any, like the, the most recent Forza Horizon game, uh, I don't know if that does or anything like that. But again, it, especially first party titles, you would kind of uh, maybe be given to think that that's something that probably could be supported more ongoing and that probably will be supported more ongoing. So... But you're gonna, again, you have to temper your expectations. You know, you have to keep them in check. You're like, is it going you know, is, is to be like, oh, now I'm get, all games are going to magically read all text to me. You know, it'll be perfect. It'll be great. Are we there yet? No, we're not, we're, it's not going to be perfect yet. But the fact that it's there and the fact that they're doing it, I mean, between this and their, like I said, their adaptive controller and all this text-to-speech stuff, uh, you know, Microsoft is killing it right now, so kudos to those guys, but that is just what I wanted to give you guys an update on, a little bit of uh, not-so-good stuff in the beginning there, but a lot of exciting stuff as far as game accessibility to look forward to, especially in the coming weeks. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for lots of mainstream game accessibility stuff, believe it or not. Should be fun. Um, like I said, I'm probably going to attempt to do something, either a recorded video and or uh, some streaming of Crackdown 3 this weekend. I don't know what exactly is going to happen, but I'm sure we'll be doing something. So, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79. You can also follow me on Mixer. Mixer.com slash BGFH. And uh, thanks again to everybody to, so that's uh, liked and subscribed and commented and who I've been talking to on Twitter and really interesting, interesting conversations there. Um, yeah, it's great. So until next time, I will wrap it up here and I'll chat with you guys again later.